The Justice, Law and Order Joint Sector Annual Review is largely focused on building public trust in a country where justice is largely akin to a marketplace where the highest bidder gets rewarded at the cost of a poor litigant. How can we reverse this malaise, afflicting the hallowed temples of justice? On the spot tonight is Justice Minister Kahindo Tafire and former leader of opposition who's also the Agago North MP, Professor Ogeng Latigo. General and Professor, good evening and welcome. You're on the spot tonight, both of you. Thank you and uh, good evening, Patrick. Good evening, viewers. Um, good evening. You, uh, good evening, viewers. A, a pro-people justice system, building public trust, is the theme of this year's Justice Law and Order Joint Sector Review. As the Minister of Justice, do you agree that you face a monumental challenge of public perception. How do you reverse it? I'm glad you you say it's public perception. I would have been worried if it was the reality. Hitherto, that's been the perception. But uh, recent time on record saying the public image of our judiciary has tremendously improved of late. And uh, I'm glad to the Chief Justice and uh, his team for improving their public image through the various interventions they put in place to improve the public image of the judiciary. As government, we have tried our, our level best to support the judiciary and through the many interventions of the jealous secretariat and the whole jealous sector, we've tried to enhance the quality of the dispensation of justice in this country. So, with time, I believe, we shall rebuild public trust in the justice system of the country. And uh, dispense justice as it should be. Of course, um, our capacity to administer justice is also commensurate with the resources at our disposal. There are many things the judiciary and other general sectors would like to undertake, but because of the limited resources available to the country, we can't do, we can't reach our optimum capacity. So you are saying some people cannot have justice because of resource issues on, your, on, your, on the side of government? Yes, for instance, we would do, have been glad to extend legal aid to quite uh, a number of our indigent people. Much as we are trying to do something about it, we do not adequately cover all those who require legal aid, those who can't afford the cost of hiring attorneys, barristers, and uh, also some uh, people who would represent them in their causes. Not because we don't want to do it, but because 
our capacity to cover everybody is limited by the resources of Europe. Uh, Professor, I just began by, um, you know, trying to tell him about the public perception. And, uh, and he says, okay, that's public perception. Um, thank God it's not a reality. But, well, public perception, isn't it important? And if the public perception shows that there's a problem in the system, shouldn't that really be of concern to the Honorable Minister? Well, first of all, <coughs> Patrick, the, the country knows that I'm an insect scientist. So uh, I'm here, like, like the, the say in court, as a friend, as a friend of <laughs> the judiciary, I'm, I'm not a professional in the field. But at the same time, yes, I'm a national leader. I, and you're a legislator? Yes, uh, when I was leader of opposition, I, I, I attended similar review annually. The, the, uh, the judiciary was very kind to invite me to this. And, and I concur with uh, my, my brother, General Utafire, that the, the, the image of the judiciary has vastly improved. And, and in Uganda, when you want to know that it is improved, just listen to the absence of complaint. If you hear complaints, then you know there's a problem. Considering what was and the silence that is around the, judicial, the judiciary now tells you a lot. Secondly, and, and, and I think uh, I must commend uh, the Chief Justice and his team when they do an evaluation and they, they bring out the outcome of that evaluation and point out that these are our challenges, people begin to build trust in you because they know you are really not hiding your weaknesses. You are really exposing the challenges that you face. And, and, and so public perception must have been a factor in getting the judiciary to do the kind of thing they are doing now which is excellent, because when we know, then we can put them to ask them to account. We said last year, you said this was the level of um, uh, pending cases. How much have you done? Uh, if we, you ask for more money, uh, we as parliament will say, with that more money, what kind of reduction in pending cases have you achieved? That is the kind of thing that counts, and, and therefore, Public perception. In fact, uh, this, this afternoon I was in Makerere University talking about parliament. We also, as parliament, have suffered from the question of public perception. You don't run away from it. You engage and you deal with it the way the judiciary is doing. You know, Honorable Minister, when you were tourism minister, you ordered a probe headed by Professor George Kanyahemba into graft. And the retired justice on the, of the Supreme Court has publicly stated that judges and justices take bribes and to borrow your words you also say that you smell a rat at one point why why can't government put a commission of inquiry and and you know you unearth all these things and then you move you know you know what the problem is the magnitude because you that, see for give me a to, picture for you see for us to engage a commission of inquiry we must have a background to it and uh, of course I'm not saying there are no instances of graft in the judiciary but what are the managers of the judiciary doing about those instances of graft I would institute a commission of inquiry if the chief justice and his team we are not doing something about that problem. Like I said today afternoon, corruption is not uh, unique to Uganda. It's a worldwide phenomenon. It's what, mat what differs is the levels at which it's being handled. The Chief Justice and his team have tackled the problem head on. And until they tell me they have failed, then I can put in place a commission of inquiry. For me to put in place a commission of inquiry, while the Chief Justice and his team, is the, or no, Chief Justice and his team are doing, trying to solve the problem, 
is a vote of no confidence in the Chief Justice and his team. And I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't want to do that to undermine the efforts of the Chief Justice and his team as far as corruption in the judiciary is concerned. While they are doing their level best, while they are talking to the public, the Chief Justice has gone around the country addressing uh, citizens, uh, asking questions and prompting uh, uh, people to come up with uh, suggestions and uh, observations and uh, uh, you know uh, point out those who are corrupt. He's put in place uh, hotlines where you can report uh, cases of bribery and some people have been caught. Some uh, junior officials have been caught and uh, etc. Uh, I don't think it is prudent for, for us to undermine the efforts of the managers of the judiciary as far as fighting graft is concerned. There was recently a commission of inquiry in a public institution, the road sector, in UNRWA, for example, and it asked that about four trillion shillings you know, was siphoned or got lost or abused in, in a period of 10 years. And, and four trillion is quite a big chunk of money. Uh, don't you think it is in order probably to follow and then that money is recovered because that's public resource? Well, if um, four trillion is perceived to have been lost in the road sector, they don't see any for that kind of intervention is with the Inspector General of Government. That's not the job of the Minister of Justice. That's the responsibility of the Inspector General of Government and the Directorate of Public Prosecution. So, that you are suggestion is a very good suggestion, but you should put it to the. You know, you know as, as a General cabinet government. minister and public resources and a minister of justice, really, you should also be telling Ugandans what is justified or even guiding. Because you cannot just say it's just a, a preserve or a, in the docket of the other person. No, I don't being, think that, that is even right. Because Mr. Are, Mr. Kamara, being minister of justice does not give me authority all over the government. If I had authority all over the government, then. I would have been Minister of Justice and the Directorate of Public Prosecution and the, and the IGG and, you know, that authority is vested with the President. I have responsibility, I've been given, and I cannot without responsibility in collaboration with other actors in government. And that particular responsibility happens to be domiciled with the Inspectorate of Government. Professor Ogengalatig, as, as the people of Uganda, and this commission of inquiry that tells us that there was a hemorrhage of public resources, four trillion Uganda shillings in 10 years in the road sector, and, and all we hear is just mentioning about it, and the money is not recovered. As a legislator, doesn't that concern you? Well, um, um, uh, the, the, the one aspect of that inquiry that, Patrick, uh, you should let the country know is that when the matter came before parliament, uh, uh, even even my colleagues who are in the public accountability committees of parliament were somewhere even adversely mentioned and uh, and and that had a very negative effect on our parliament would then handle that kind of report of course the commission of inquiry report is really is a, is a, is a government document what the Public Accounts Committee deals with is a report from uh, the Auditor General. And if the Auditor General points out that there's been a loss here, there's been lack of accountability here, it is incumbent upon the accountability committees, which are headed by the opposition, to follow the matter to its logical conclusion. And, and I must commend the Abdul Katundu Committee Recently, they, they fished out uh, 26 billion money that was meant to compensate uh, people. In the same sector. Yes, mm. in the same sector. So, so handled properly, it, 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 it works. You know, the problem with Uganda is that unless it is loud, it is not action. 
I, I only wish that uh, we we begin to uh, to to deal with things like that in in a manner that that is not politics, in a manner that is not uh, buying popularity, but in a manner that is effective. And sometimes doing it quietly when the culprits think uh, they have been let loose and you get them by their necks, that's the most beautiful thing. You know, uh, Professor, the opposition politicians have also been accused of uh, not making a difference. That where, where they just put up a smoke screen, but that with all respect, some of them are equally corrupt. Why should the people of Uganda trust that you can do a good job? Well, you know, you know in, 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 in even in the committees that we lead, we are actually a minority. And, and the report that comes out of that committee, I remember on one or two occasions, the issue of the Temangalo land thing was when an accountability committee got split. But in most of the recent reports, I, I, don't, I have not heard of other minority. I, in that case, I don't, which, I don't know which one becomes the minority report because we are the minority. Mm -hmm. And if we own the report, numerically would be fewer. Uh, I, I don't know whether it is just uh, a designation rather than a numerical fact. But, but I, I, I think opposition uh, NRM doesn't help. Let's put that committee to task because they are responsible for parliament regardless of which party or background they, they belong to. Let them just do the good work and that good work will be the work of parliament. General Tafiri, the EU envoy Christian Simit says the judiciary is not making strides in fighting graft. I think those were his words and he's your partner um, in development. Doesn't this also really give you a major concern? The, the EU envoy said that exactly. But unfortunately, he did not share his sources with me. And uh, I like him. He's a nice man. Uh, I'm going to ask him to share his sources with me. But my guess would be he's getting his information from uh, these commissions of inquiry and um, the reports, the numerous reports. Uh, but you see, uh, this is of issue of corruption and exercise of authority ought to be done with caution. Yes, of course, there are guilty people, but sometimes when you don't, you are not cautious about investigation, when you rush, you risk the danger of hurting innocent people. I'm not going to accuse anybody of being corrupt until I have incontrovertible evidence, evidence that will stand in a court, so that I don't risk hurting innocent people. Rush action that amounts to fascism. Then, then sometimes, you then you should have taken need to the advice of Justice Kanyahamba, who, who said there is, the system is corrupt and maybe institute a commission of inquiry. Yeah, then but you'll have, you'll you, have, you you'll see, have when you say the system is corrupt, bring adduce evidence. In court, they say, when you make allegations without substantiating them, it's hearsay. Anybody who alleges corruption ought to adduce evidence or to point out to where we can find the evidence so that we can engage the police, we can engage the inspectorate of government, we can engage the auditor general, and they follow, these institutions can fo will follow where there is there are acts of corruption. And so I am saying a commission of inquiry would be a good avenue for you to unearth this. Yes, the commission of inquiry ought to be, in the case of the judiciary, I think a commission of inquiry would be a very good suggestion from the chief justice.
if the chief justice was to say, I have seen this much within my department, and I think government helped me with the commission of inquiry. But while he is doing his job, I don't want to undermine his efforts. Like I said, you know, last time I was here, uh, I said about the inspector general of police, everybody was bashing Kehura, oh Kehura, you Kehura. I, I told you and I want to tell the country that for as long as General Kehura puts those errant policemen on trial, let's back him, let's not bash him. I am not, I am not uh, saying there are not, uh, there are not uh, ex 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 excesses by the police force, but for as long as the Inspector General is trying to correct the situation, let's help him. The, for as long as the Chief Justice is taking strides to correct the situation, let's help him. When necessary, we can advise him to set up a commission of inquiry. He is the head of the judiciary, and the judiciary is an arm of no, the government. The political head of the ministry. Yes, I'm the political head of the ministry, but the judiciary is an arm of government. Uh, you see, Patrick... Uh, Very briefly before we take a break. Yes, uh, 2008, when government started increasing the budget of for the road sector. In my statement in reply to the president, I said, we are putting money where we don't have the institutional capacity to handle the money. Too many times we focus on corruption from the offense perspective, not the institutional weakness perspective. And it's important that where corruption exists, that normally invariable is a symptom of institutional weakness. If you deal with the institutional no. strengthening, you can actually substantially overcome. And then the other one is a judicial process, which doesn't rot like mangoes. We're going to take a break, Honorable. When, when we come back, I'll be looking into the 10-point program of DNRM that they came with more than 30 years ago, and part of it was to fight graft. For 30 years, graft is still here. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Kamara, and my guests tonight are the Minister of Justice, General Kahindo Tafiri, and the former leader of opposition, and now member of parliament, Gago North, General Professor Oganga Latigo. When you came to government as NRM in 1986, I remember you had a 10-point program, and, and one of the points was fighting graft, fighting corruption. And, and, and you know, and does that fight really, you, you, have, you have failed to get a knockout blow for 30 years. Yes, I agree with you. One of the 10-point program was to fight graft. And we've been fighting graft. But, uh, Patrick, you cannot travel faster than the car you are driving. We are working with the Ugandan society. And corruption is not one-sided. It takes two to tango. For as long as society attempts at the, tempts the judicial officers, the phenomenon of corruption cannot be entirely eradicated. Is it, not, is it not really General Kahindo Tafiri, uh, you know, the, the responsibility of government and leadership to change s values of the people, to, you know, you know, the, the, you, you know route out, root out corruption, offering leadership? Because if you don't do that, you, you cannot say we are into a country that is corrupt. But it's 30 years is a generation. You could have changed us. You could have made it better. You could have offered leadership for people to see. <laughs> the church has been around for 2,000 years. They still have pain, repentance and uh, uh, public renunciation of sin yeah. and, conf and, conf and confession. So uh, the motives of mankind are less transparent than the emotions they produce. How come our neighbors, some in the south, seem to have done it Better. How come our neighbors in the Northern Hemisphere or in Asia, in Malaysia, and Singapore, in 30 years they seem to have transformed? And we are. The you same you kind. say they seem, they seem to have transformed. 
have they eradicated, uh, have they dispensed with the CID and courts and all? It's a question of degree. It's a question of degree. Like I told you at the beginning, corruption is a worldwide phenomenon. It's a question of how much it has been tackled <coughs> in what areas. You say, Our neighbors to the south, south seem to have done some bit of work, but uh, they do their work quietly. For us, we do our work publicly. There is more. Quietly meaning what, sir? Well, I would, I would, I would, I would want to see a vibrant and uh, noisy press. pointing out corruption the way our press does, does, does. Uh, here you, we do everything in the open other people do it quietly uh, we have um, other institutions that have fight corruption and people get to know but <laughs> I wouldn't say the vultures <coughs> get into the vault and in the open and it, everyone gets to know. yeah you see <laughs> can we catch the vultures Aren't you making allegations? You see, if you say the vultures have got into the vault, can't we catch those vultures with evidence? So you think, so I, you I don't want that to suggest risk. the Catherine Vamugemereire Commission that said uh, four trillion got, an, got, got lost? I mean, was that in effect? Has the process been closed? The Catherine Vamugemereire Commission made a report. That report is being followed by Parliament and the IGG, when these investigations and uh, interventions by parliament are finished, the recommendations are made, something will be done. We shall proceed to the courts of law for those who have wound. Uh, I have a case to answer. But we are not going to jump on a report and take people to court and, you know, Quite a number of those who are pointed out in the report have gone to court to say we were never given a chance to be heard. Don't you think they deserve a, 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 deserve a right to be heard? Let's hear them. The world is not going to end tomorrow. Let's hear them. Let's give them a fair hearing. So that when they can't convince us, we take them to court and then uh, uh, end up convicting them and condemning them. Patrick, you know, we, we, we started from the question of trust. Uh, I suppose that um, the, 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 the trust that, that the judiciary wants the public to have in, in, in it or in them is not a public relations trust. It will therefore be very important that all the relevant arms of the state work together to ensure that when cases of corruption emerge, they are quickly investigated and thoroughly, they are prosecuted, and the court process takes the shortest time possible, <laughs> and the sentences <laughs> are seen to be thoroughly commensurate. It doesn't require many things. You, my brother here, El Mumbi, is like me, he's a general, he knows. You don't have to sh shoot a whole battalion to bring discipline. You just have to shoot one soldier, <laughs> and the rest will know that if you... Such cooperation. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I agree with you. You know, the population may be anxious. But like I said at the beginning, authority ought to be exercised with caution. If these people who are mentioned by the Honorable Justice Wamunga Marire have to be put in court or put on trial, many of them have run to the courts of law to say we're never given a fair hearing. Granted, let's allow the courts of law to give them a fair hearing, to allow them to plead their case. So that when we finally bring them to the dock, 
then they have no reason to claim they've been, there's been a travesty of justice. It's been a kangaroo trial and their human rights have been abused. You see, I happen to be the minister responsible for the judiciary, but I also happen to be the minister responsible for human rights. I also happen to be minister responsible for uh, for, the the jails. <laughs> for, <laughs> for jails and uh, so let's have interplay between the various arms of government. Uh, the Honorable Justice from Gamerili has made a report. Uh, people have challenged that report. Let the courts pronounce themselves about the report and uh, the various individuals who have sought intervention in a court. Then we shall ask the DPP to follow up and the IGG to follow up. Then we are, uh, so there is the intervention of parliament. Parliament is also going to come up to buttress the Honorable Justice of Gemerili's report. It, then the, 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 pub, uh, the, the committee of parliament is going to give people opportunity to, to have their say, of, of, to, uh, to be heard. And then when we finally take action, we are convinced beyond reasonable doubt that these people have a case to answer. And uh, that's how justice is dispersed. Of, of course, the, the, you <laughs> see the, 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 delays? The, the, the explanation that the minister gives is, is an explanation that you cannot escape it. He's the minister of justice. He cannot be seen to impose injustice anyway. <laughs> but, but for us, for me as a politician, uh, we hold the government on their word that they have to fight corruption. And the public out there will need to see you fight corruption. I don't know in your strategy how that fight will be visible and convincing enough, but, but the cry about corruption has been a long-standing cry. And uh, you look at the case of uh, the, the pension scam and the case dragging in court. Even, even the enthusiasm about what is being done as a positive thing dies. Is there any way of expediting such things? And that is not in breach of anything. If, if, if you decide that, like, like the election petition thing, mm -hmm. where they say we will sit for three months and hear all these cases. And the people who investigate are told, you have to prepare because we are going to have an express trial. Something to that effect. The, 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 the anti-corruption court, when it started, nearly operated in that mode. But that tempo has died down. And, and Ugandans are all rats. They're too suspicious. They, they, they don't sit like Latigo, a scientist, and w looks at the logic of it and tries to uh, explain the nuts and balls. They just make their, draw their conclusion. And, and, and they tend to gravitate towards the conclusion of this trust. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is important. And it is incumbent on the part of government. Yes, I agree with you. It's good and, and I'm glad. Agree. I agree with you. And I'm glad you brought the example of uh, the electoral commissions. Quite a number of people have supposedly lost their seats. How many have exited? None. Because all of them have appealed. Yes. And so if you think the <laughs> preliminary trial was first, the appeals are going to slow down the process. They are going to appeal. Our prayers. Court of appeal. They also. <laughs> they, they, we are praying yes, that. Yes, yes. For once, so you for see, once the judiciary you see can help us. Judges operate like aircraft maintenance engineers. You don't rush them. When you rush an aircraft maintenance engineer, you risk problems in the sky. <laughs> 
allow the judges to sit down, listen to evidence, evaluate the evidence, and make decisions. Because if you rush them, you risk hurting Actually, it innocent no, people. I, 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 I happen to have precedents anywhere no, else. Yeah, no, I happen to have been also to have been taken to court in a petition. And the judge who heard our case said, I come from far. I'm not going to spend a lifetime here. It is your case. Are you ready? Because as a judge, I'm ready to hear. And we would sit from morning mm -hmm. up to seven. That is not a normal time frame of, of, of a court process. Mm -hmm. But that alone allowed the judge to hear very many cases and to go back to his base station. But for the sake of sending the message out there that if you uh, it is established that you are one of the corrupt people, the judiciary will uh, deal with you expeditiously. It will help a lot. Gentlemen, we're going to take a break. When we come back, let's now focus on the uh, electoral reforms, and we'll be asking when are we looking to see the ministers table <laughs> legitimate electoral reforms? <laughs> we'll, we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching On the Sport. My name is Patrick Amara. My guests tonight are Honorable Kahindo Tafiri and Honorable Ogenga Latibo. Uh, if we, issues of confidence are important, and I'm wondering how, uh, Honorable Tafiri, you can restore confidence in that man in Amolata, in that man in Yumbe, that man or woman in Kisoro, in Chawente, or in Chenjojo, that justice means equality before the law. You see, rebuilding, building confidence in the justice system is a mild-headed hydra. <laughs> Some of the faults you attribute to the judges are actually not their problem. A judge decides a case on the basis of the facts laid before him or her. If the police has, have not done their work properly, when the prosecutor has not laid the facts before the judge, the poor lady or gentleman, the judge, is stuck, even if he's consciously aware that uh, the prosecutor or the defense lawyer could have done better, his, <laughs> his or her hands are tied. But, but are you now, when you perceive that judge, because of the judgment he, his, he, he or she has, has made, made delivered, yeah. delivered mm -hmm. as a result of the facts before him, and you say this man must have been corrupted, you forget that it's because it's on the basis of the evidence adduced or lack of evidence denied, <laughs> you know, which was not brought before the, the judge, you know, even if the judge knew the, the facts and but, but, but the, the judge can only act on the basis of the evidence adduced. So when the police don't do their work adequately, when the prosecution or the defense lawyers don't do their work adequately, it's not the fault of the judge when the ju judge delivers his or her decision. So that one we should also bear in mind. And the public should also understand that judges are tied by the evidence put before them. They are, they are not working alone. They are, working they are not working alone. They are working in an environment. But Similarly, government, in matters of corruption, we also act on the facts as they are provided. Because somebody will come and say, oh, this uh, Patrick is a terrible fellow. He's, you know, he's horrible. He's, he should be put in jail and throw away the keys. And you say, on what basis? Because like I said, authority ought to be exercised with caution. Only when Otherwise, you will hurt people. But, but that's very interesting because when you are hounding uh, the opposition politician, Dr. Kiza Besige, you never see him to say uh, he has a right, he has all these things. He's, 
It's always been taken. Tough. You say, you, oh, I'm glad you say, you never seem to say. We never seem to say. Is that true? Is that correct? But, but why, why would he be, every moment, be, being stopped from <laughs> at least the civil war in the market? Why don't you ask him why he behaves the way he behaves? He does. <laughs> what, do you, what would you want the police to do? He, 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 what would you want to do, the police to do, when there is a threat to public order and peace? What would you want the police to do? Human rights are also in your docket, yeah. Oh, yes, human rights are in my docket. And when they are Observe being careful, on respect for my rights or to not to infringe on the rights of others. If I am going to make a demonstration, I should not take that demonstration to the marketplace. That lady who is selling tomatoes has got a right to survive. Yes, you may be making your political manifestations, but there are people who don't want these manifestations because they are for yeah, but not affect their livelihood. Yeah, but must, and, but and, and the state ought to protect us equally. Well, as a, as a, as a reporter, I've followed him uh, sometimes. So he's not actually going to the market most of the time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you know, that, that, that probably is, is a debate that will take us off yes. uh, what is today. But, but uh, again, public perception is very important. If the police think they're doing it right. One of the biggest challenges I have had in this country is that political processes are mixed up with technical security processes. In, in countries like Kenya, you don't e hear a police spokesperson explaining why a politician was arrested. Here is the police spokesperson. The Minister of Internal Affairs is quiet. I've written more than twice about the police. And I said, what you are doing is, 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 is nothing that I've known since I grew up about police in this country. It's nothing that I've known about the police where I stayed many years in Kenya. They do their things. Then they let the politicians do their things. Some of these explanations, some of these confrontations. So, so I think they, they need to do the policing and get out in the politics. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and by the way, when the police does the politicking, they normally do it, the they do it wrongly <laughs> and the politicians pay the price. <laughs> it's not the police that get very hated, except one of few individuals, but it is the state. Okay, and, and the I'll be opening the line so that you too can be a part of this discussion. We have the minister, we have uh, the member of parliament representing Agago. Um, maybe you have a question for them. Maybe you have an idea. Maybe you have even a testimony um, that you have to say. But as you make that call, let us switch gears and look into the electoral reforms. Because in regard to the question of electoral reforms, um, somebody was asking me, that why is the minister reluctant to table legitimate electoral reforms? Why don't you want a level playing field, he says, if we are to have a real democracy, honorable minister? Um, democracy is not only elections. Democracy encompasses many things. Yes, is, uh, elections is one of the, uh, of the factors of democracy. There are other values and other attributes to democratic governance. Electoral reforms can only come as a command of the Constitution. And when we are preparing for constitutional review, you cannot talk about electoral reforms until you have a constitutional basis for enacting your electoral legislation. Why don't you wait until we have Sort out, sorted out our constitution review, and then we proceed with uh, how to go about the elections. Because uh, the reforms emanate from the commands of the constitution, and when we are going to review the... But do you believe the reforms are necessary, electoral reforms? even though they have to follow the channel or the, or the, 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 the steps you're talking about? What I believe or don't believe 
is not what Uganda is, is about. That question will be answered by the people of Uganda when they are You are, you are Ugandan, you are a leader. Yes, I'm a Ugandan, you, you, I'm you a have, leader. You have a yes. voice, you have, I a, you, you have a platform, and we just want to hear pa from you. Patrick, I can't be a judge in my own case. Because it's me who is going to make these proposals, and I'm going to make the proposals on the basis of the ideas well, which I have gathered. It's you who is going to make the proposals. Yes, so, yes, yes. So you are saying we I am, need, I we am, need the reforms. I am going to make the, the proposals. proposals as a result of the consensus which I have built. All right, let me, let me, let me roll. the uh, electoral reform and the constitutional reform process. We, we, we've got to consult other people because okay. there are very many stakeholders in this country who want to see the country run properly and who want to be proud of Uganda as a place to live. So me, as a steward of the docket of justice, ought to listen to the citizens, the owners of the system, the government, you know. Mm. What I feel is just a cog in a big machine. Uh, Uganda was there without me. It's here with me. It will be there long after I'm gone. I can only make a small contrib contribution. My contribution to this cause is infinitesimal. Now, let, uh, for example, <laughs> For example, the end of the chairperson Badru Kigundu's um, of service tenure. is coming ten years, coming to an end, and mm. uh, so I think you it's within also your are yes. to appoint a new yes, yes, electoral yes. commission chairperson. Yes, we are consulting. Who is now acceptable both government? We, and we are consulting. NRM. We are consulting. We are consulting, and I'm consulting many people, elders, opposition, government, everybody. I hope we shall come up with. You have an opportunity this time around. Yes, we have to a get a person. We are we are working head over heel to get a consensus based electoral commission. Okay, let me let me open the lines and I'm told uh, we've been having people trying to reach us. You can reach us on the line and then maybe speak or engage the minister or engage the honorable professor Ogengala Tigo. Let me I have I have a call online. Let me take the first call online. Hello. Yes, sir. Good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, I'm Kato Richard. Yes, Richard. I'm a youth care person at the municipality. Okay. Uh, first of all, mm. uh, corruption mm. Uh, should not be, uh, uh, fighting corruption should not be left government alone. So before blaming the government of failing to fight corruption, first blame the elders and the parents. What are the religious leaders are doing? fight corruption. So, uh, that habit of, uh, enjoy, uh, of, of corruption comes from the home. If the parents fail to, 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 to teach their children about corruption, <laughs> no way how the government will fight and uh, end it. I oh. thank you. All right. Uh, okay. He's, I, I think you have a point because uh, uh, through uh, parenting, we can raise another generation uh, uh, that, that maybe has a set of values that abhors corruption. And, and, and I think I agree with Kato that, that in, on that front, we need to do so much. We need to be there. You, you to, know, but, but, that, but before but we even raise you know, them. Be, be, that, that, is, that is not right. When we were at Makere, we, we, we happened to have stayed in the same hall of residence. He was ahead of me, but we met in Lumumba. You're all in Lumumba? Yes. yes. You're all Mumbis. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But those days, uh, it is Thursday, you will, you will dial this phone and call the, tel uh, the taxi company and say, I need a taxi tomorrow at 5. And you'll get out at 5 and find a taxi there. And you'll go out for your errand, they drop you maybe in uh, uh, Audion Cinema or something like that. By the time you come back at 4 a.m., you have done probably three places. You have not given the taxi man a cent. You give him when he delivers you back. Finally. Back to the moment. Now, that tells you what, how far we have gone as a country. A and, and so... As much as we want to try and pin, you know, you know, because you are, you came up from families, you're being, you are groomed 
now, but there's a generation that has not been groomed no, well. I think that's what he's talking about. No, the, you see, the life at the now, life is, you know, those days, uh, to do a calculation, you do a ca cranking machine, you multiply this, put it somewhere, and then do another one. Now, you can do any virtually any calculation on even on your phone. Mm. That is how fast life is. What I said earlier on, we have to build the institutions and the infrastructure to match the challenge of the time. If we don't do that, I can tell you, you can give birth to what kind of Ugandans. All right, L let me pick some, maybe two or three more callers um, online. I have a call online. Hello? Hello? Uh, is that uh, MTV? Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Ernest Oloya. Yes, Oloya, you're on air, sir. Yeah, I am glad. Go right ahead and don't listen to, uh, to your echo. Just keep keep talking. Yes, let me reduce the, the volume. Okay, that is, that's proper. Yeah, what I'm saying is I'm glad that I'm watching my uh, old mate. I was in Lumumba, <laughs> but I didn't remember of the Anatigo, but Otafia was my good friend. Okay. So I'm really very happy. Okay. Now, what I can see from these two gentlemen is one problem. The problem of lack of clear uh, guidelines. Guidelines from the arresting time, guidelines from the investigation, uh, prosecution, and up to the judgment. Unless we come up with very clear guidelines, there is definitely going to to be no end to this fight of corruption and fight of any other uh, crime. So it is now really the responsibility of the Minister of Justice to come up with a clear guideline, just as it is, of the, uh, the elect election petition. If we can take that short time, why not in the other cases of corruption and other crimes? So it is my humble request to Minister Tafi that they have to come out with a very, very clear guideline. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, a lawyer. Thank you very much. Yeah. Let me take maybe two more callers online. Hello. 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 Yes. Good evening, sir. You are on air. What's your name and where are you calling from? You are calling from Bundibujo? Yes, please. You are on air, sir. Go right ahead. I'm Patrick Murungi Patrick. Murungi Patrick, go right ahead, sir. When you look at these gentlemen... Can you, can you turn down the volume of your TV set so that it does not bring an echo because it will confuse you? Yeah, when you look at these two gentlemen, Kaindo Tafire, Honorable Kaindo Tafire, Honorable Ogeta Rashido, they are explaining the root cause of corruption. And in that sense, when you look at what they are saying, they look, they are looking at the real problem which is affecting his branch. But in that sense, when you look at what they are saying, the truth is, Uganda is not the only problem with corruption. Corruption is affecting every, every country in Uganda, in, 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 in the world, rather. When you, you try to explain what they have said from the beginning of the talk up to now, you'll see uh, the root cause of corruption is not right now. It is even in the old days. And uh, I like the way Again, that Latigo explained it, that when, you, when they were in Lumumba, those days, there was no corruption. But right now, there is a lot of corruption. Not that the government elects it, but the generations that are coming up are the ones causing it to be the way it is happening. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Mirungi in Bundibujo. Yeah. Let me let me take the very last call online. There was Hello? Was Hello? Yeah, the milk 
seconds. Hello? I have a call online. Hello? Hello? Okay, let me pick another caller, I think. Uh, hello? 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 Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? Joshua Nimbale. Joshua Nimbale. Go right ahead, sir. Yes, uh, hmm? I can hear you. you. Yes, you're on air, Joshua. Yes, uh, corruption, one uh, uh, moderator there. The corruption starts from the head and it goes down the, the bottom. Because even the Bible says the anointing starts from the head and flows down to the beard. So, uh, when uh, there, the Honorable Minister should really explain to Uganda that the NRM organization has the will, the political will, to uproot corruption in Uganda as one of the core values of the NRM system. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like the fact that we have been to Bundubugyo and now we went to Mbale and we've been to northern Uganda. And here, Anes, Kampala. Anes mm -hmm. was in Tinder. Anes was in Tinder. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember Anes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I know he can't remember me. I was not having a ball date like now. <laughs> 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 but uh, <laughs> but I know him very well. And uh, and uh, the point he said is, is, is still reinforces what I said. Build systems. When you have systems, you know... Uh, Watch, watch the cleaners in, 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 in the small uh, guest houses in the villages. And watch the housekeepers in the big hotels. The housekeepers have a checklist. The one in the guest house in the village, they think they can do it from their head. And you'll come and find there's no toilet paper, there's no soap. In the big hotel, the demands are bigger, but everything will be there because there's a checklist. So that's, that's precisely what Anes is saying. And it becomes a habit. Once you develop that habit, you can go back and say, the problem was around here. Even investigation becomes easier. But we don't, we don't, why we, why we can't develop the patience to have systems that we respect, that we adhere to, uh, Investigators in Europe, they know you, you're, you're the murderer. But they know they will never convict you unless they have adequate evidence. They'll, they'll trail you, they'll look for the evidence. Once they've got it, they'll get you. Okay, Honorable Minister, if you could respond to Murungi. Uh, no, Joshua, most especially in Nimbali, thinks the political will. Mm, uh. <laughs> I envy him the freedom to criticize, uh, criticize us, and uh, but I, do, I, I don't envy him the lack of information he's talking from. If there was no political will on the part of the NRM to fight corruption, what would I be doing here? I am here. Because I'm exactly doing diagnosis, explaining to the country and listening to the country. And he's listening to from Mbali. Yes. <laughs> I'm explaining to the country, but I'm also listening to the country that constitutes political will to fight corruption. But Just I'm prepared to listen and I'm prepared to explain. I'm prepared to listen to criticism. Like uh, my friend Oroya. He's made a very good point. I now go and say, ask my colleagues who are involved in the task of fighting corruption, say, by the way, the owner, the, this gentleman said, do we have a checklist? Actually, they know, because we are many actors. The judiciary in, issued yes. a checklist for, yes, yes, for yes. magistrate. Yes. That's the kind of approach. That's the kind of approach. Yes. Yeah, okay, our, our team is out. I will, I will ask my colleague, the minister of internal affairs, I ask my colleague, the minister of uh, local government, I ask my colleague, the minister of uh, gender, because that constitutes the Jolos, Jolos family, yes. do we have a checklist for all these uh, issues? Because you see, the interplay between the different departments constitutes the Jolos family. And what we are reviewing today, Mr. Patrick, is the performance of the justice law and order sector.
which is we yeah. are interlinked they are interlinked these sectors they are interlinked the performance of one affects the performance of the others honorable minister our time is out let me ask you uh, professor gangala tigo to give you us your parting shot very briefly well i i, I really go back to appreciating what uh, the initiative of the chief justice and uh, we can only encourage the judiciary uh, because when they perform well they strengthen our democracy because the, our democracy is hinged on justice and, and the respect for the ru uh, rule of law. Thank you. Your, your concluding remarks, sir. Um, I will concur with uh, the Honorable Gengala Tigo, and I say I compliment uh, the efforts of the Chief Justice, but I also compliment the efforts of the other players in the Jeros family. The URSB, the NIRA, the prison service, the prison service, the, the police. Because you see, people don't know the police have the, the most upfront task of maintaining law, but also balancing it with human rights. And then uh, investigation. investigation. And then, and then uh, because sometimes I get uh, surprised when people who say they are manifesting their political interests start slapping the police. Slapping a police officer on duty is a crime. Nobody points out that slapping a police officer who is on duty is a crime. But when the policeman, you know, acts in self-defense, then they have abused. The other one is occupational yes. hazard. <laughs> you sort of like, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> have policemen been killed on duty in Uganda? <laughs> they have. Do policemen have parents? They have. Why should you, who is making manifestation about your political rights, kill a policeman? All right. Let's is that, that fair? Okay, let's, let's wrap it up there. Honorable Mr. General Kahindo Tafir, thank you very much. Honorable Professor Gangala Tigo, thank you very much. And all of you who have been a part of this. Let me mention Joshua in Bali, uh, Mr. Loya in Intinda, and Mr. Mrungin in Bundubujo, and all of you for your contributions and for having been part, part of this for the, from the beginning to the end. Good night, and God bless Uganda. If, if, if,